I'm bad at keeping my emotions bubbled We're good at being perfect, we're good at being troubled Yeah I fucking hate you, but I love you I'm bad at keeping my emotions bubbled We're good at being perfect, we're good at being troubled That was Greater Stories 2 album. In this documentary, we'll dive into the storyline of Wolf, the characters, the narration, and what Tyler wants us to learn from this album. It's the prequel to Bastard and Goblin, but it has such deep storytelling that it will take time to break down. Sit back and relax as we dive into Wolf by Tyler the Creator. The album starts with the title track, Wolf, in which Tyler introduces us to Sam, who was at Camp Lugner for a while. He appears to have been sent to Camp Lugner to deal with the loss of his grandmother, her name is Jamba, and his inability to contact his dad on answer, which is very beautiful. It's a beautiful song saying that his dad, if his dad called him, he would answer. Suggesting that Camp Flogno may have been a misnomer for therapy and asylum sessions set out on Bastard and Goblin, respectively. When Tyler meets Sam, Samuel is brash and tells Tyler to stay the fuck out of his way. Then two men enter a tumultuous relationship throughout the trilogy, battling for the love of Sam's girlfriend, Salem. Specific characters lead the narrative of certain songs. On Awkward, Sam and Salem talk about how they met and fell in love. On Slater, Salem rides on the handlebars of Sam's bike, while Frank Ocean pisses Sam off by bullying him for talking to a piece of scrap metal on wheels. Sam continues throughout the album, angrily rapping about how he sells blue while Tyler battles through father and fame problems on Answer and Colossus. Now let's go deeper. On Party Is Not Over, Campfire and Bimmer, Tyler Crater starts to hit on Salem. He asks her to take a chance with a nigga like me. Mind you, he's playing the wolf character now, he's wolf. And when Sam goes out on a drug run on Beamer, Tyler Wolf tells Salem how her man got a lame Impala. Sam comes back at the end of the track and is pretty pissed off at Tyler or at Wolf that Wolf had taken Salem down to the lake, a location referenced on Goblin along. Gotta watch out for them 504 owners. Your mother's a goner. I warned you before you supersize my fries with that dollar. You got a daughter. Shit's getting harder. The only thing you wanna bought her is your freedom. You can't afford to get caught up, but you're in too deep. And the seashore ain't saw you. You got a mother. She don't support you. But you bought her a new house because you love her. Growing up, you barely had a roof. Now you got a coop and it doesn't have a roof. I guess you're accustomed to what you're used to. So you bought two, nigga. They coming for you, nigga. Hating and booing and bitches like Susan and Karen be doing your pockets are winning. The man in them's losing his fucking mind and it's all an illusion. Who is eluding? All of this potent. I am the reason your family is using and shooting up. It's my fault. You can't blame me, motherfucker, for killing your aunties and uncles to us feeling hunger. All I wanted was a cheeseburger and a little chain. Tuck didn't realize this game fucked up some lives. Oh, how's mine? My conscience eats it up all the time, but other than that, I'm fine. I got a little money on my head. 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48
homie got a chop shop, I sold that truck and I sold that dope Motherfuckers hope this nigga go broke, but like my work, I give no fucks, I'm sorry Yeah. She could have been a doctor, nigga, I'm sorry Could have been an actor and won that Oscar set, I'm sorry I sold that soap and I kill black folk, I'm sorry But I got a nice car, put my sister through school and my mama all cool, I'm sorry I'm in too deep And I can't see the shore I'm sorry Yeah, you get addicted to the flip We used to call you get addicted to the flip I'm sorry The transaction is the hustle We even wanted the money, it's just your job You feel like it's your duty to be The man in between the man And makes this happen for that person And do this and do that Stories about you getting into fights and all this unnecessary bullshit. This was what's on your mind. Talk to me, I'm here. Dama roll another one. I'm just fucking with you, I ain't smoking none. My squad bring terror, no attended pun. Merch booth made niggas extensive funds. Mama got the rover with the range. She don't ever, ever got a struggle, not a game. And I put that on my phone, Sam Song. Sam performed Wolf song. This suggests that Sam wrote the song I F H Y, directed by Wolf Haley and Salem, because Wolf shoved his wow in Sam's girl. Um, I can't say the word on the word on YouTube, uh, but uh, yeah, he rhymes with the. Uh, at the end of the track, Tyler Wolf asked, Why is Samuel such a effing D? To which re she replies, He isn't such a badass actually. He's only here because he ran away. So some shit happened back home. The shit gets delved into like doctors looking for something on pigs. As Sam murders a bunch of people, Wolf Haley recruits Earl and Domo on Rusty to help him fight Sam. On Trash One, they go to war. The album ends with Wolf Haley getting sent to Dr. TC for getting caught um, playing with himself on Tamale. On the last track, Wolf Haley says, F that nigga Sammy. If that, ni if that nigga, if I seen that nigga, I would have killed him. If you're at camp talking about murder, that probably isn't a very bad idea. It's probably the reason if Haley got sent into deeper therapy, which brings us right back around to Bastard and Goblin. Now, follow up. It's a trilogy, so it's very confusing and has a lot of um, curveballs. So, essentially, the storyline of Wolf is between Wolf Haley, Sam, and Salem. Wolf Haley falls in love with Salem, but Sam and Salem were already dating and were very much in love. But Sam has a lot of issues, anger issues, a very twisted dark mind, and he likes getting into trouble. Wolf Haley doesn't really care about any of that. Wolf Haley just thinks Salem is beautiful and he really thinks she's cool and he likes her and he wants to date her. But Salem warns Wolf Haley that Sam is very dangerous and it would be unwise to go behind Sam's back. Because Sam is a big bully. And Sam bullies with Haley on a normal, like, usually Sam bullies with Haley. But with Haley, doesn't really oh, give a fuck, he doesn't care. With Haley, retaliates and sleeps with Salem. And when Sam finds out, oh, he's pissed. Sam is pissed. And they go to war. They fight. They fight and they fight some more. It's a very weird fight. It's Tyler, obviously, but it's detailed and Sam has a lot of issues. Sam is a drug dealer. Uh, 
Sam is really messed up in the head. Sam is sick in the head. He has a lot of issues because his grandma died on Jamba. Uveli, on the other hand, Uveli is more of a cocky guy. He's confident. He doesn't care, and he's ready to take um ready to take Sam's bitch or not bitch Salem. And Sam has to fix his issues. Sam really needs to fix his issues. And Uveli got caught masturbating, so he also has a few issues, but not as much as Sam. Now. Who is Dr. TC? This is very important to the entire trilogy. I would have to explain the trilogy partially in order for you to understand Wolf completely. So in this next chapter, I want to go deeper into the trilogy so you can understand how Wolf works and why Wolf is even important to this trilogy in the first place. Let's dive into the next chapter. Now I kick it in the birds. Guess I went check started cash again. I stopped rapping and start asking where my fucking cash Bastard. Yeah. You need to understand Bastard to understand Wolf. So we start with Dr. TC meeting Wolf Haley for therapy. After Wolf Haley trying to kill Sam at the end of Wolf, Dr. TC tells Wolf Haley that there will be three sessions Bastard, Goblin, and Earl Wolf, which is, well, um, Earl Sweatshirt version of Wolf or, or Sweatshirt on Wolf. Ufeli talks about a girl named Sarah, which isn't her name. Ufeli just thinks this shit is clever. Sarah Salem. So Sarah is Salem. He just decides to you know, be a dickhead and call her Sarah to confuse the TC. On Sarah, it's apparent that Ufeli will never get Salem. He says she tried to play him like a dummy by messing around with Sam. For the rest of Bastard, Ufeli already has already a futile relationship with his dad and goes into overdrive on seven on Pig's Fly. It seems that Sam makes an appearance. A guy talks about selling um cocaine or drugs. How he went into a psychological phase and how he's battling half of his mental continue the character narrative. if that isn't enough the name suggests that it's sam's apology for the murders he committed in wolf on the song pigs at the end of bastard wolf Haley graduates school but he's still pissed at his dad threatening to shoot him this sets up the asylum scenario for goblin well the storyline is a bit construed, but it's still very deep and highly detailed for an 18 year 18 or 19 year old child creator. Ufeli is still mad at Sam for what happened on Wolf. He's also reeling for the absence of his dad. Ufeli and Sam are still fighting over Salem. Ufeli threatens to shoot his father and get sent into deeper therapy sessions, which continue on the album Goblin. So to understand Wolf, you have to understand Bastard and you have to understand Goblin. It's very clever from Tad the Creator, but it's a lot of work for people trying to understand his work. But it's fun. And that's the point of his albums. To get you guessing, get you thinking and to dive deep into the storyline. Chapter, we talk about Goblin to understand Wolf. Goblin starts straight after Bastard with Dr. TC telling Wolf Haley that he would, would never shoot anyone. Wolf Haley doesn't agree and goes into a brass six minute stream of consciousness telling everything and everyone to fuck off. The lyrics to her cross reference Wolf track awkward. On her, Wolf Haley talks about a girl whose name is his password. He seems to be saying that Sam is out of the picture. But by the end of the track, they get back together. He must be talking about Salem. On Awkward, a track by Sam, Sam states that Salem's name is still his password. Although, continuity is broken in the story at that period. Like those really good bits in Fight Club. It's clear that Sam and Wolf Haley are the same person. Like I mentioned earlier, Tyler Creator has a bunch of alter egos, so now we're getting somewhere. 
it seems that with Haley and Sam are the same person but you know different maybe different time periods it seems that Salem Salem was a girl that the girl was very very interested and in love with but he has two sides of himself Sam which is a very broken human being and with Haley who has a lot of issues and is also technically broken but seems to fare off better than Sam following up from her Sam calls out with Haley's crew on sandwiches with the bar they're them and we are us kill them all and another bar with the fucking Vitamin Mister I don't give a fuck who cries about his daddy in the blog because the music sucks Sam's messed up bong huffing anti establishment persona peppers the track while with Haley urges people to listen Tyler creator or just people listening deeper into the music. Apologies, uh, with Haley and Tyler are the same but distinctly different sometimes. Analog, the track Analog returns back to the summertime scene that takes place after Bimmer. When with Haley takes Salem down to the lake. Summer never has to end with with Haley, but it did because Sam Tyler's messed up alter ego stole Salem back. At the end of at the end of Goblin, Dr. T C bring brings some of Tyler's friends to speak to him because they're worried about their angsty little friend. At the end of the trap, Ufeli shoots all his friends, but Taco and Jasper Dolphin survive because they didn't turn up. Couldn't that be why? They're the only two joining Tyler Creator on his recent tour. I was sure it also survived because he wasn't around at the time of Goblin. Tyler mentions him frequently in the narrative, which, although amazingly unplanned, ties into real life Samoa scenario. This supports the theory that the next record could be Earl Wolf, Earl's version of Wolf, but that never happened because Earl Sweatshirt moved on to other things. Goblin concludes with Ufeli trying to break out of the Goblin Asylum, but Dr. TC confides in Ufeli and, and Tyler the Creator that they are the same person. In a deep voice, see Tyler, I'm your conscious, I'm Sean Cat. I'm Ace. I'm Wolf Haley. I'm me. So this is the fireworks moment that happens when the, the listener is like, "Oh my God, Tyler Crazy so genius! Oh my God, oh my God!" We've all done it. Listening to um, these three albums, making stuff in now, rhyming words together in a rhythm explain. is just one of those things. But it got you famous, though, didn't it? Uh, I think. I don't know. I think my personality overall did, but... You but know, it was rap that was brought yeah, you to for the, the public. Yeah, for the most part, more or less. So you don't knock it? Um, yeah, I don't knock it, but I do so much other stuff that I just... Oh, but Ooh. as time prevails, I know for sure people are going to recognize me for it, so I don't really stress it. What were you like as a kid in high school? What were um, you like? Annoying. Um, when did you go to school? L.A.? I changed, yeah, I changed schools every year. I didn't have many friends, like close ones. Well, I was always the uh, the odd one out, no pun. Were you a class comic? Uh, I was a class clown, yes. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty much the same, shorter. <laughs> shorter? Yeah, I was, I was shorter, I got taller. <laughs> so how did the music thing start? I've been in the music since a young one, like the only seven-year-old <clears throat> spending birthday money at Sam Goody and like Best Buy on albums and every Christmas getting the catalogs and not looking at toys, like only getting music and stuff and like focusing on, um, on like the different sounds and stuff. Like so in your stealing, DNA, yeah, you like music. stealing CDs and then like just so, things like that. So I started, started rhyming words at like seven and then around 12 is when I start like trying to play piano and play instruments and I taught myself drums and things like that. Wow. So, did you graduate high school? Yeah, of course. And then what did you do? How did you make? How did you start professionally? One, I'm not a professional. 
because I don't know what I'm doing. I just do it. I don't like the, when you put the professional thing on it, it just okay, gets well, it really By professional, weird. I mean, who, but I make money from it now. Yeah, who so. paid you first? Your first paycheck musically came was from. Was the sickest shit ever. Can I curse? Yeah, That's go ahead. Fucking sick. Uh, what did you do? It was at the Low End Theory. It was like 2010. It was me and my, uh, and it, was, it was five of us. And they paid us 500 bucks to do like a 30 minute set. It was the craziest show and we split that. And we thought we were so on. It wasn't a lot of money, but like we were broke and we thought we were so on and it was the sickest shit ever. And uh, that's just from us putting out music on the internet. Like I set up a site and we just throw stuff on it. All the random artwork that I would make, I would put on there. All the dumb videos of us just being annoying, we would just put out and um, people gravitated to it. And it was sick cause like, it was just us just being. So how'd you get famous? I guess just, like I said, just putting it out. On the internet. And people just caught on and word of mouth and word of mouth. And I think it's more because you know, people could relate to that. Like we was just fucking around, but we made music too. And from the random artwork, it was just our own style of thing. So people gravitated to it. And it was also like, wow, they make cool music and damn, they're funny too. And wow, this is- How'd you, look, how'd you hook up with these guys? Um, cool thing, I didn't go to school with most of them. Um, I met some of them at a skate park or like through mutual friends because um, my original idea was a magazine, which included everything I was into, whether it was music, art, movies, clothes, colors, a bike, wood, like whatever. <laughs> and uh, all, all my friendships that I have now is all connected through one of those webs. So I'm friends with certain photographers that I like and people who do music and it turned into a collective and that's when we just start putting things. You're a about. renaissance man. I don't know if that, okay. The LA Weekly deemed Tyler the creator sound garnered and hellish. His music is not for the faint of heart, is riddled with vulgar language, at times extremely homophobic. His sound is very gritty, his voice is deep. The tone of his songs oftentimes extremely dark. <laughs> that all true? No, not at all. I could play you some instrumentals as some of the prettiest shit you've probably ever heard in your life. I probably curse a lot. Um, I'm not homophobic at all. You've influenced others, right? Uh, I probably influenced some people to do some stuff, whether good or bad. I don't take credit. Farrell said, being a young black kid, especially at that time, I was different from all my other peers. So when I've seen this dude saying that he was open to rock and jazz and skateboarding and all this other stuff, I was interested in, I was gravitated toward because all right, I'm not the only black dude is probably called weird. So you affected a lot of other people. You realize that? Uh, yeah. It's Who sick. affected you? Um, Dave Chappelle, Marshall Mathers, Pharrell Williams, Roy Ayers, James Pants, Wes Anderson. Um, a lot of the people around me, my mother for sure. I don't tell her much, but she played a big part. Um, do you ever plan to expand? Do you ever want to do things musically other than rap? That's what I do now. Like, um, that's the thing. I, like, I really want to sing, but my, my tone of voice is too deep to do what I want. So now I'm just listening to like Isaac Hayes and Barry White and things like that just to see how they use their voice. But I hate rapping only because it puts you in this like, in this box and like, so like I was scared for this interview because me being a rapper, I was scared of the type of questions that you would probably ask me, not even on purpose, just, you know, because I'm a rapper and things, and then people look at you different. Oh, he's a rap artist. No, but you that just said, take much talent. you just said you, you don't want to rap anymore. I don't, I don't. I just want to compose So you got again. famous rapping. Yeah. But you're leaving the world of rap, but you've been successful in other areas. Yeah, I mean. I'm, you don't need I'm rap talented anymore. Enough, I'm talented enough to do other things, but I don't know, I'm pretty bored with it. It's not interesting. And I don't want to be, like in the future, I want to, like I want to do films. I want, people mention my name, I'm next to Wes Anderson or Quentin Tarantino. I don't want to be, I don't want my name to be mentioned next to other rappers. I got it. At all. Coming up, where does Tyler's creative drive come from? We delve deeper into our guest's mind <laughs> after the break. Welcome back to Larry King Now. 
Tyler, the creator, just did a selfie of me and him. It's it's beautiful. You're a beautiful man. You're, you're a great guy. You've been termed absurdist. Do you think you're absurd? Nah, not really. I'm just loud and honest. Has this city influenced you artistically, do you think, growing up here? Uh, I guess. There's no I city like this city. Yeah, dude, I've been to a lot of places, and I'm so grateful that I didn't grow up anywhere else but L.A., because everywhere else sucks to grow up in. Like, it really does. I mean, uh, New York is sick. Miami's cool. It's some other places that would suck to grow up at. You're <laughs> glad you grew up here. I'm very grateful. Did you ever meet your father? Uh, I think I did at 12, supposedly, but... I don't really know. That's what my mom said, but... Are you mad at him that he moment. desert the family? Nah, dude, I'm stoked. I no. think if I had a dad, if I had a... I think if I had a dad, I would have went the normal college route and, like, like a lot of other people. So you're not angry at him? I'm so stoked my life panned out how it was. I just decided to rap about it to seem like I'm sad, but... Would you I'm like stoked. to be with him? Would you like to meet him? Um, I mean, one day, I guess. I don't really think I mean, about he must it. know all about you. Yeah, I don't really care. Like, I'm fine. Not even being passive aggressive right now. I really don't care. How important is your mother? Uh, very important. I see her every day almost. We don't talk much, but. What do you mean you don't talk much? Like, I'm always gone, <laughs> but she be putting the house together. Have you got a girlfriend? No. Do you want girlfriends? Uh, in the future, get married, have a kid. But not yet. You're too young. Not yet. Not, not to be settled down right now. There's too many fish in the ocean. And as a rapper, which I hate saying, you are a big shark, and I can do a lot of fun stuff. Do you want to be famous? Uh, dude, literally, if I could... Yeah, do you want to be known everywhere? Walk dude, down the street, and people go, Tyler! Dude, I could be rich as hell when no one knows who I am. That is the shit. You want the money. But I get away with certain stuff, like yelling at people they think is funny. You've been criticized for using offensive language in lyrics and songs. It doesn't seem to bother you. Why do you use offensive language? Like I mean, fuck do you, yeah, do you use that for effect? In other words, it's effective to say that. Or do you enjoy saying it? Or is it natural to you? Yeah, it's just pretty natural. I don't, I don't really think twice on it, I guess. I don't know. It's just words, man. It's the society object to it. Uh, some, like people who live in caves and like are pretty fucking bored. Do you use the N-word? Nigga, yes. Now, that's an offensive word to, to some people, to many people. And how, in what terms do you use it? I don't know, man. See, like, people have to understand, I grew up in a different time to where Explain that to word me. is just a word. It has no effect, but it is a double standard because there's certain people who will get offended if someone who doesn't have the skin tone of me says it, like, which is really weird, you know? Like, then they're keeping the original meaning of that um, a lot. I don't know how to explain it. Um, well, if a white person says yeah, it. Yeah, like if a white person says it. Isn't it derogatory? Like, it's derogatory because your skin isn't the same color yeah. as mine. But why when I s It's just weird that a lot of people still get, you know... Upset. Upset with that, and it's like... Just, I don't know. I think you give certain words power. Are like, you saying it's just a word? Yeah, like... If, if you choose is to be there any word you that could that, call me a nigga and I would not give a fuck. Is there any word that would bother you? Would the word boy bother you? If someone not said, hey, boy. Not at all. Wouldn't bother you. Not no all. word would bother you. No. So anybody could call you anything. Yeah, I wouldn't care. All right, that's, that's good for you. You're not anti-gay. You're not, no. No, like, again, fag is just another word. You could find anybody more so my age who uses that word just like that, but it's a different time and everything. And um, I know that word is offensive to some people, but I don't, I'm not, shoot, I know straight dudes who act like fags. Like, you act like a piece of shit. Like, <laughs> I, it doesn't have anything to do with your sexual orientation. So like, nothing people, bothers shit. you? What bothers you? Um, Racism doesn't bother you? Bad words don't bother you? What bothers you? I hate, uh, I hate frauds pretentious people and like, I don't know. I hate people who's not comfortable with themselves. That scares me. You hate phonies? Yeah, I hate people who don't really like what they like. What do you mean? For, um, 
for example, like it's it's a uh, like people who don't really like you don't really like that. You just like I, I've known people who like only like stuff because either I like it or it's the cool thing to like or things like that. And that's these people aren't comfortable with themselves the thing to do. Like yeah, like like they'll base their opinion off someone else's opinion because they don't want to be like the odd man out. Like that's what scares me. Man, I don't that, like that. Either. That puts so much like, dude, you don't like that goddamn shirt. Why did you wear that? Because it's the tight thing right now. You don't even look comfortable. You think we'll ever have a gay rap artist? Maybe Open one day. Yeah. That will be, but that's like, why does that shit matter? I know. Like, if he want to fuck dudes or whatever, why does that matter? Like, why do we care? I've never like, figured that out. Like, that's so fucking crazy, right? After the break, Tyler sounds off on the biggest issue facing the millennial generation. Now, what Dr. TC said, let's explain how all this even works. Dr. TC is Tron Cat. Tron Cat is just, uh, is just long for TC. So, Tron Cat is one of Tyler Creator's alter egos. Ace is an alter ego from Bastard. It's another one of Tyler's alter egos. Wolf Haley is the moniker that Tyler Creator usually uses. Um, when directing or just in general with mostly Wolf and Goblin. So all these alter egos, Sam, well he's Sam but he's also not Sam which is kind of confusing but that doesn't really matter to the story. Now, Tron Cat is Tyler Creator's conscience, right? Wolf Haley is one of his alter egos. So Tyler uses all these alter egos to express himself but they are different sides to himself so each alter ego takes a different side of Tyler Creator. Tron Cat is the voice of, re of reasoning, the voice that tells him you have to calm down, you have to chill out and you have to be a good person. Wolf Haley is kind of the fucked up person, persona who does whatever he wants and doesn't give a fuck and just is a very foul mouth human being. Sam is also like that, but quite worse because he's a murderer uh, and many other um, criminal things. Then there's Tyler. Tyler is like a combination of everyone. Every single one of the other angles is just one part of Tyler. So Tyler is the whole being. You understand? So, yeah, these are Tyler's alter angles, and the album just follows the story of mainly Wolf Haley. Wolf Haley struggling with his dad struggling with abandonment from his dad struggling with mental health struggling with things like loneliness or uh, anger issues and things like that and on goblin committing all sorts of atrocities and evils and doing all sorts of crazy things in the asylum and on wolf the summer camp that's before uh, goblin a wolf Tyler is more chill. Wolf Haley is chill. He's falling in love with Salem and he's just trying to love her but ends up in a war with Sam, her past lover, who has a lot of issues as well. But does he win Salem in the end? Well, the answer to that is we don't really know because at the end of the album, it's not really clear if Salem chose him or Sam because, well, Salem could have. There are three things that could have happened. Salem fell in love with Wolf Haley and they lived happily ever after, which probably didn't happen. Or Salem left them for Sam and Sam was kind of a, a dickhead, so they wouldn't work out long term. But let's say they fell in love and whatever, and it worked out. Or she left both of them and decided to follow her own destiny and find her own path. <laughs> What's more likely to happen is the third option because Ophelia still had a lot of growing to do as a person. Sam was really, really messed up and needed to fix himself as a person. So my theory is that Salem was really deep in love.
I, I make assumptions. Niggas. Where's Tyler? Bottom of the countdown. Shit ain't been the same since I found out. Hide the beach, go smoke for Bow Wow. Now I'm the loud shot volume style foul mouth fucker that your teenage kid likes to bow down. Riding around town in Seattle with the same shotgun that Kurt used to click, clack, boom, pow. Still suicidal, but some assume that I'm cool now. Cause I got a fucking award in my own room now. Nope. But I could flip shit like a couch pillow and have my death silent like a loose vow. Um, the bandwagon turned into caboose, so, so don't let that little nigga trumpet loose sound. Just let him play. Geek facts, stupid loser, find a rope to hang I'm not bipolar, see I'm just known by those couple names I wanna tell my pops, but shit, he'll probably say the same Fuck Hated by everyone, that's the way it seems I don't know what's shorter, his damn temper or my self-esteem I sit in my room she knew that Wolf Haley still had to fix himself and to work on himself so probably maybe they met in the future and fell in love but she would give him space and leave him alone to fix and work on himself as a person so yeah that is the end of Wolf and the issues with his dad he comes to kind of a uh, bittersweet moments that he hates his dad for abandoning him but he kind of misses him and wants to hear him out and loves him because well he's still his father regardless so he would want to answer his call and just have closure and maybe experience the joy of having a dad maybe just once in his life it was a very sweet track so yeah it comes to that kind of consensus with that and yeah he becomes himself the whole himself he becomes Tyler the creator no more Dr. TC no more Wolf Haley he becomes himself at the end yeah and that is the end of Wolf by Tyler the creator now, I could understand Wolf and I've explained Goblin but there's some things I left out okay let's just dive in now Wolf Haley is very very messed up and deals with a lot of anger issues the main focus of Goblin is his teenage angst, angst his anger issues and his um, attempt on alive himself he's very angry he's angry at the world he's angry with himself and he's angry at his father for abandoning him he hates the world for his problems and he also hates himself for the way he deals with his problems with Haley that is and Sam is angry that his grandmother passed away in Wolf, Wolf Haley and Sam get in a war but Wolf Haley is very also also very cocky and very angry he steals Salem from Sam and Sam is pissed off about that. I've said that before. Ufeli in Goblin is a very destructive person. He's on a dark, a dark spiral, a downward dark spiral, and 
is committing all sorts of heinous crimes with necrophilia, assaults, and so many unspeakable crimes that Wolf Haley commits in Goblin. But it's just Tyler's way of speaking on his demons and facing them through the music, speaking on the his own intrusive thoughts, fighting them and actually becoming a better person with his sessions with Dr. TC and actually falling in love with Salem and re- recovering and changing as a person because of her. Now, does Ophelia, the question is, does Ophelia find peace? Does he go to jail? Does he die? Well, Ophelia died because Tyler killed Ophelia. But before he died, what happened to Ophelia? Well, that isn't clear, but from what we see in the album, it seems that Wolf Haley used his love for Salem, decided to make changes. He was angry at her, but decided to make changes in himself and decided to change himself to be a better person and follow Dr. TC's sessions instead of just laugh and, and frown at the world with anger or shut up the world with anger. So has to change because of Salem. And Salem is the love of Wolf Haley's life and Wolf Haley decides to change for her. And that is what happened to Wolf before Tyler killed Wolf Haley. And yeah, that is basically the end of Goblin, which makes us understand Wolf better as it is the prequel to Goblin. The journey of Wolf Haley and his war with Sam. Yeah, that's it. That's pretty much it. I've covered all my bases and yeah, that is, yeah, that's the end of Goblin and where Wolf takes over. Any of got a ladder? Go right here. <coughs> you want me to do it? Oh yeah, you could kill him. I'm saying, you know, like, if I ever told you to do it, blow up, don't go down, you know, like, oh. Tell by the badge. Uh, I'm sick of hacking and coughing. I'm off in this fucking awesome. I'm animals, no it's off and off in this rapping nonsense. Four stories in my home, like what the fuck's an apartment, nigga? Get you popping like Peter's Poor's doing puberty. Take bets on how quick Tyler can reach maturity. Cussing out Surrey like a waitress with no patience. Oh, you wanna tip, bitch? Where is my dick for gratitude? Where did you learn business? Ring or something. Where did like, you I, learn business? I don't know business. I just do. Well, who handles business? You have, I have business. a freaking amazing team with me that you have accountants make, and... they let me be the creative one and they focus on all the bullshit. So how do you deal with the suits? You know, the people who, um, who wear the three button suits. They're and... idiots and I just make sure they like, I like meeting people. I want to talk to the head dude. I want him to know who I am, where I'm coming from. Like I, I personally want to call. Let's let's speak, you know, just you so they can know. The head like, guy. Yeah, like, but it sucks. Like, people are uh, those dudes are so caught up in money and they're scared of anything out of the norm. So they'll be quick to say like, "Oh fuck that!" Like. Like, it's so much stuff I want to do, but because of the things that's connected, even stuff you ask me, whether it be homophobic slurs or the fact that I want to yell or the fact that I'd rather do this or shoot it like this and not use the normal, like, they're scared, so they're like, they'll back away. And it sucks because we'll never progress 
if we continue, if, if we don't get the courage to just say fuck it and try something new. Where do you see yourself when you're 40? Uh, rich as fuck. <laughs> um, couple films under my belt, a bunch of furniture, a couple buildings, skate parks around the world. Married? Yes, with a one-year-old. Not a one-year-old at 40. I don't know. I'll have a kid. Though. How old are you? I have a son, 23. You're, you're, like, you're a baby. You know? I mean, you're a kid kid. You're young. I guess. I don't feel no... I don't even know how old I feel. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You use Stupid. them all? Uh, you don't use them. The only thing on my phone is Instagram, and I use that to either post stupid, funny photos or photos that I sit in color just to look at pretty photos, but I hate all of that shit, to be honest. You don't tweet? I mean, I do, but that's either early in the morning or late at night when I wake up to let you know I have a show or whatever the hell is on my mind, and then that's it. I hate Snapchat. I hate all that shit. You have said in the past... Stupid. It's making kids so stupid. You're making that clear to me. You said in the past that college is not what makes a young individual happy. That you, you preach individuality. You didn't go to college. No. You think you missed something by not um, having a higher... No, not at all. I mean, I do think it would have been sick to do the way college looks in movies, but I'm living a life that no one else really gets to live. And it's not, I'm not saying that going to college is bad, but it's not for everyone. And I remember my mom trying to push that shit on me. And I just knew in my fucking soul that that's not for me. Like, I'm going to find my own path. Like, let me fuck up. And it turned into this. And the way society is, they tell you it's a certain way you have to be. Like, when you're a certain age, you're like, oh, you're still acting like that? Like, blah, blah, blah. Or like, like what do you do? Like you need to go to school or you don't need to go to school or just things like that. And I just want everyone to know that it's okay to say fuck all that and follow their own path and, and just do whatever makes them happy. Because I know, I know people who was in school only because their parents said so. Or um, doing shit that they don't really want to do for, for random reasons and it just fucking sucks because I'm over here having the sickest life ever and that's because I chose to and I, I figured it out. And I just want to be that, like, the nigga that lets them know they can... Do, do politics interest you? Not at all. Did you vote? Uh, nah. I didn't. I'm a horrible person. You're not a horrible person. <laughs> nah, you, don't, I didn't. You, don't, you didn't vote? You didn't feel proud that, you, that we have a black president? Uh, I could give a fuck less about his skin color. I mean, I guess it's really sick that, um, just based off where America was at one point, that that dude worked his way up there, but, like... I don't care, man. I'm fucking making stuff. Did you see, ever see any any um, racism toward you? Um, I mean, when I was younger, like, I was, I was, my, my friend Earl said this in a song, but I was too white for the black kids, and I was too black for the white kids. So I kind of didn't really fit much into a, um, into a, you know, a, a certain spot. Yeah, I like, know. And things yeah. like that. So, yeah, no I, wouldn't, I wouldn't call it racism, but you know, or uh, yeah, like sometimes, like in Beverly Hills or so, like you know, they just because I'm like a young black dude and I'm dressed like this, and I'll probably skate to Chanel on my skateboard or whatever. They're just like, oh, this dude's window shopping. But then I go cop my mom a really expensive purse, and then they want to treat you different. Like, oh crap, he actually bought like. They just think either, I don't know if it's just based off how I look or whatever, but, you know, things like that. It's just he's perception. here to rob something, but wait a minute, he's got a credit card. Oh, shit, card. he actually bought this, and he's buying more, and oh, crap. Then they look out the window and see, like, oh, that's a nice vehicle. Oh, crap, like... Drive a motorcycle? Not at all. I'm <laughs> not touching motorcycles. Do you have a girlfriend? Not at all. Are you interested in girls? Of course. I love Freckles. I love Jennifer Lawrence. If you're watching this, leave the nigga you with. Next, Tyler, the creator's adult swim comedy, Loiter Squad, is back for a third season. I hope she's More on that in a game of If You Only Knew after this. God. Jennifer, if you're watching, call her. Food. Back with our remaining moments with Tyler, the creator, your show, Loiter Squad, its third season on Adult Swim. What is the premise of Loiter Squad? A uh, couple friends who have stupid ideas and Adult Swim decided to let us put those onto their network. Like what? What kind um, of? Um, I don't know. We, you just have to watch it. I can't even Do you consider it. yourself an actor? I am not an actor. I just 
given. Go. What should I take away from Loiters? How should how should I approach it? Should my 15 year old watch it? Probably, I guess. Yeah, sure. It doesn't have an age requirement. If you think it's funny, you're gonna think it's funny. What's gonna it's happen not. in season three? Um. I'm a rapper. I'm a real rapper in season three. Oh, you are. Like, so the chains and the sweat. I'm I'm killing it, nigga. I'm killing it, nigga. Do you make up rhymes in your head? Oh, like all yeah, the time. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think 24. I'm thinking of other shit as I'm speaking to you right now. You're thinking of something else while you're talking to me. Like, what are you thinking about? What are you thinking about? Right now, I'm. I don't know what color my sheets are gonna be for this new bed that I'm creating. At the same time you're talking As to me. I'm talking Should to I be offended by no, that? Not no, not at all. That's okay. just how my brain works, and I'm very sorry. I, I'll, I'm, I'll, I actually, I'm not sorry. I can't help that. No, that's I, you. I Why are you sorry? Guys. We have some um, social media questions for you. Oh, shit. <laughs> and Lou via Instagram. Have you, thir- have you thought about turning Loiter Squad into a movie like I'm Jackass? Fuck no. Why not? 15 minutes is already annoying enough. Why the fuck would you want to watch us for an hour and 20 minutes? That's Brad- so stu- I'm concerned for that nigga. Ugh. Bradley Sola on Facebook. What's the best piece of advice you ever received? I think it was, I think Pharrell, Pharrell just, I think it was him. He was just like, dude, just fucking go. Just, just be. Good Don't advice. Go. Just be. Melamy8 on Instagram. Any new developments on Wolf the movie? <laughs> I can't answer that. Why? It's a secret. You'll see when you see it. Okay. At Weasel Tuss on Twitter, what is your spirit animal? I'll, I have a bunch of spirit animals. I'm a squirrel, I'm a whale, I'm a goat, and I'm a dragon. Well, what does that mean? I don't know, but I know in my fucking soul I'm a dragon, a goat, a whale, and a squirrel. Fatty three on nine via Twitter. Who exactly is Felicia the goat? Um, I did this commercial. I did some commercials with Mountain Dew, and that was the main character. And I just ran with it. A, a, a commercial product hired you to represent that. Yeah, and they were sick. And then uh, someone that named Boyce Watkins uh, decided to see that and saw some negative stuff in it. Decided to write an article. And then simple-minded people who can't think for themselves decided to all agree with it. And then Mountain Dew didn't want any bad light on them. So instead of backing me up or, you know, standing up for me, knowing that it was no type of negative light, they decided to back out and just let me be and be there alone, which it worked out for the best. I'm so grateful that that happened. Steven Boroff on Facebook. Who would you like to collaborate with musically in other ventures? Um, Roy Ayers. I want to meet Martin Scorsese, and well, think about it. It's not it's not a courtroom. You don't have to answer. Eric Carvalho and on- Fuji, Fuji Film. I got some sick ideas. Them niggas in the suits is probably scared, but I got Eric, some sick stuff. We play a little game. If you only knew, I throw out the questions you just answered. That's a sick Aaliyah song. Missy, First girl Missy. you ever kissed? This girl named Lauren, uh, kindergarten. Gar. Never forget. What school? Gar. Gar. Yep. First car? Um, I think it's this E92. My mom, no, my mom bought me this little Honda I had for a month when I was 19, and I fucked it up. M- biggest misconception about you? Um, I'm evil. I am probably the most annoying and brightest person ever. Stranded on a desert island, what three things you want with you? I need my inhaler, <clears throat> syrup, and legit uh, iPod, I need music. Favorite city to perform in outside of this country? Outside of the country, London is sick and Norway is sick. But motherfucking Australia. Love Melbourne, love Sydney, nigga, that's it. That's the one. Most embarrassing moment? You ever have an embarrassing Um, moment? I don't, no, I don't have any embarrassing moments, but my friend Lionel does have this one photo of me that I do not want out. It's nothing sus, but it's just a fucked up photo, and that's probably the only thing that... Favorite curse word? Fuck. Proudest accomplishment? Uh, I bought a house at 22 years old. What what city? Uh, Far. Let's just say that. Far from here? Uh, Yeah, the drive here was not tight. Favorite movie? Napoleon Dynamite. Least favorite thing about L.A.? Um... 
the smog. I have fucking horrible asthma. And oh, that's what the inhaler, you need shit, that. Man. yeah. I got it tattooed on my leg, dude. It's fucking sick, right? Wow. It got nice thighs, huh? Favorite food? Uh, I love syrup. So I guess like waffles and shit, bacon is cool. Favorite cartoon character growing up? Um, I love Finn from Adventure Time. Family Guy is sick. That's a fucked question. Family Guy is great. Amazing. Seth, if you're watching this, I love you. I want to meet you so bad. Uh, he's a good friend of mine. Great wow, guy. Wow, we should hang out. Space travel or time travel? Time travel. And I would time travel to a specific Where time. Where would you go? A fucking Michael Jackson hair getting burned during that fucking Pepsi commercial. I want to see that firsthand. Yes. Tyler, you're a... On the song Sam is Dead, it is said that Sam is already dead. So this is a very important detail. So when Tyler becomes himself and shoots his three alter egos down, he killed Ace, he killed with Haley, and he killed Troncat or Dr. TC. He killed the three of them, killing his the old self and becoming his new self, Tyler the Creator, and accepting who he is as a person. This leaves us missing the middle part of the story after Goblin. But before Sam is dead, Sam was murdered. How did it happen? The only members of all features to survive after Goblin are Tyler Creator, the sweatshirt Jasper and Taco. This suggests that it, the next album, which did not happen by the way, did not happen. Long away collaboration Earl, which should be Earl Wolf. That did not happen. There are no answers. It never happened. Tal moved on to Cherry Bomb after that. But the storyline has gone full circle and is complete. Tal Creator became himself. Sam died a long time ago and he killed Ace, Trunkhead, and especially very important, he killed off Wolf Haley, which was the most important character in this entire trilogy. And that is the end of Wolf by Tal the Creator. Thank you for watching this documentary. It's been Nazaro and yeah. Thanks for watching. See you next time. fucking dick and swallow this case in us. What? Fuck that. Y'all win. 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 Fuck that. Hey dad, it's me, um, oh, I'm Tyler, I think I be your son, sorry, I called you the wrong name, see, my brain splitting, dad isn't your name, see, dad gets a little more fitting, mama's only 20 when you ain't have any fucks to spare, you Nigerian fuck, now I'm stuck with this shitty facial hair, also stuck with a beautiful home with a case of stairs, see so you not being there, fucking fire started my damn career, but fuck it, I got Clancy he Gave me the chance to see a world I wasn't supposed to I'm stoked that I didn't know you But sucks you ain't give a fuck and consider a sperm donor now Fuck is in no coma I'm changing my shit to Haley And I just ain't being passive, nigga You a fucking faggot, nigga Got a show on Monday Guess you ain't getting no passes, nigga But if I ever had the chance to ask this nigga And call him I hope he answered Look, I'm in love.
I fucking hate you, but I love you.